Hey everybody, this is Chris DiFurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode of Shift Break is brought to you by the wonderful people keeping your equipment clean and your coffees tasting amazing. That of course is Urnex. Urnex has been creating cleaning products for the coffee industry for over 80 years. They develop products for a wide range of equipment such as cold brew, steam wands, grinders, espresso machines, brewers, and they even have the world's first dedicated cleaner for roasters, which is awesome. These products are developed to be effective and easy to use, and one of the ways that Urnex ensures that is that they work with professionals all over the world to make sure that these are going to perform the right way on the bar. Uh, The bottom line here is that clean equipment makes the best coffee, and the best cleaning products are made by Urnex. So get their products in your store over at Urnex. Dot com. This episode is also brought to you by Odeco. Running inventory and doing orders takes up a lot of time, and, and staying on top of it, while essential, is often hard to do when there's the unpredictability of the day-to-day of cafe life. And that's where Odeco comes in to do your cafe's inventory and ordering. Odeco uses artificial intelligence to put your POS data to work, and then it acts as your virtual purchasing agent to place orders for exactly what you need based on your sales history, uh, weather, local events, and it has a more than 90% accuracy rate in predicting your future sales. Odeco AI obsesses over every item to predict, fulfill, and manage your inventory. They've helped their partners cut waste by 50%, uh, food costs by 9%, and saves owners and managers two to five hours per week. And of course, which one of us wouldn't want that? So if you want to cut waste, save time, streamline uh, your ordering and inventory systems, make it easy to take care of these things that are essential for your cafe, then you need to sign up for Odeco. Go find out more information, try them out by visiting odeco.com backslash keys to the shop. Okay, so I am back from Coffee Fest, which was really amazing in L.A., uh, I was there teaching, doing latte art, got to meet a lot of great folks. And uh, to those of you who I got to meet, it was awesome to meet you. You know, a lot of great conversations happen at Coffee Fest. It's nice to see the community at, in one place learning and getting off on the right foot. And thank you to Coffee Fest for putting on such an amazing show. It really is an essential thing to attend if you're in coffee retail. You know, when I was there at Coffee Fest... Uh, I have a client in Lomita, California named Corridor Flow. I'm helping them as they are opening their first store and was able to travel down on Tuesday night to do some training with their staff. And one of the questions I asked the staff was what some of their fears were about uh, opening the cafe. And we're going to talk about sort of centering ourselves on the right focus as we go forward, learning coffee, learning hospitality. And someone brought up the fact that, you know, there's a lot of great coffee bars in L.A. And the question, or more, what was expressed was around this idea that as we're learning about coffee, as we're honing our craft, you know, how do we match up to the other people in coffee? And this person who's learning as a barista is expressing concern, you know, that it feels like there's pressure to know everything at once and be great right from the get-go and those of us who have been in coffee for a while know that that's just not the case it doesn't happen we, we all start at one level and we graduate as we go in experience actual day-to-day bar work we graduate to different levels of competency of skills and we grow we grow as professionals kind of the whole point of this show really is to help in that process and the the sentiment that was shared there though is not unfamiliar to a lot of the folks that I've had conversations with at Coffee Fest as well. There is a um, kind of a pervasive comparison happening in the industry, especially because today there's a lot more opportunity to compare yourself. There's more images and more videos and competitions, and there are way more businesses and people uh, to idolize, to put on pedestals than there ever has been. And it's not like it wasn't a problem before. When I started back in, you know, the beginning of the 2000s, um, we still did that. But today it's even more available to you to either be inspired by that or to be kind of fearful that 
I can't be confident going forward because I'm not as good as this. Or my coffee bar doesn't look the same way as this person's coffee bar. And the answer that I gave to my client and the answer that I'm giving here is your peers are not your customers. Your customers have a, a, a set of expectations and needs that need to be met in order not just for you to keep the lights on and pay the bills, which of course, this is you know how business is done, but also uh, to build rapport and community in your coffee bar. And a lot of professionals sometimes get into this mindset where they become obsessed with finding out where they stand with the rest of the industry rather than being obsessed with where they stand with their community and their customers or even uh, with their coworkers amongst themselves. This kind of um, mindset says, where, where do I place myself in this industry rather than how am I developing place in a coffee bar? Um, you can tell when you go into a coffee bar whether or not they've built it for the community or for their own vanity, for um, their peers, to impress their friends and the people that they look up to. They say, well, this coffee bar or this professional does X, Y, and Z, so we have to do that too because that's what coffee bars do. And the question is barely ever asked, what do our customers want? Because their un the underlying thought is, what do our customers know? Kind of asked in a uh, facetious way as to assume that they just don't know anything. And maybe that's true. Maybe they don't know anything. But the problem with that is the underlying assumption that we can't take our sense of satisfaction for a job well done from our customers, we have to take it from our peers. We've got to uh, compare ourselves against these major brands that um, we feel inspired by. And I'd say, yeah, okay, be inspired by them. But there's a line between uh, being inspired by the performance of a cafe or a peer and being fearful and not allowing yourself to be confident in what you currently are doing. Again, the people that come to your coffee bar sometimes when there's a trade show, all the people that came to the coffee bars in L.A. to visit during Coffee Fest, we are not their customers, and they shouldn't be obsessing over whether or not we are going to have a great write-up about what they do. They should be obsessed, and the best ones that you can visit are obsessed with making sure that the customers that come in their store every day are taken care of and that they're tuned in to their needs on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, if they're buried in Instagram and fretting over whether or not they're going to be ridiculed for a menu item or the way that their workflow uh, goes on bar or the decor that they have, um, then their customers are just going to be left in the cold and eventually they're just not going to feel the love and they're not going to return to the cafe. So the message is this, as you go forward, as you hear interviews here on this show, for example, or you watch competitions, or you peruse Instagram to see these highly edited photos of, of coffee bars, just know nobody is doing a perfect job. Nobody is out there living that Instagram life in reality. As you get started opening a coffee bar, for example, this is a question that's going to come up. You know, you might despise small beginnings. You know, you might not want to embrace and be confident in your, you know, a latte art abilities, for example, that classic example of somebody who, who can pour a pretty good heart, but apologizes to the customer when they serve it, that it's not as good as they could have done. Kind of ruins the experience that the customer has because it, it, it I don't know, it just makes this vibe of now we have to pity you and, and, and uh, um, you're disappointed in what you're offering. You're not happy and confident. Nobody likes a hospitality experience like that. The retail industry needs people who are obsessed not with comparing themselves, not with where they stand in the industry, but are you doing well by your coworkers and your customers and your community? Those are the first things. And it would be easy to just cut those off as, well, they don't know as much as I know because I went to Coffee Fest and I learned all of this stuff. And I learned, amongst other things, that we're not as good as other people. And so we need to step up our game and we need to, you know, just take our marching orders from what I think other people in other cities want. That's just not going to work. 
your coffee bar in its most successful iteration is one that balances a constant sense of improvement for the place and the time that that coffee bar exists. Both of those things. So the answer is your peers are not your customers. Focus on your customers going forward and what they think. Be inspired by those in your industry for sure. But don't become obsessed with impressing your friends and your peers at the expense of impressing and caring for your guests on a daily basis and will be just fine. Um, your people want confident, happy service. And usually when we're obsessing over what our friends think about what we're doing, happiness and satisfaction in our work is harder to achieve. Customers can sense that. So let's hold ourselves accountable to make sure that we've got our priorities in line as um, professionals and our customers will thank us for it. We'll be happier as a result. So I hope that this episode was helpful for you. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you here next week for another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.